Hello, and welcome to my fourth review, the Slater Kinney album, The Hot Rock. This is my favorite Slater Kinney album. I don't think there are any dud songs. The Hot Rock came out in 1999. Most of this album is also about a breakup that Carrie had with an older woman. It was not a healthy relationship. The first song on this album is Start Together. The drums are so crisp at this part. Not only does it have the lead guitar part, it also has the harder and determined guitar part in the background. It kind of sounds like an avalanche. This guitar part is so incredible. It's so short, but it packs a really big punch. Very purposeful, driven guitar part it can kind of stand alone. That's a common theme in this whole album is that the guitar parts can stand by themselves. After being with someone you're dependent on, you can stand by yourself. There's also kind of a desperation in Korn's voice in that song that I find really powerful. And it really grabs you. The next song on this album is The Hot Rock. <laughs> The guitar part itself is more contained within itself rather than reaching out to other people. What's interesting about Carrie's voice, kind of in this whole album, is that it's held back a little bit more in the back of her throat. Some pretty fun percussion too. That guitar part is so incredible to me. The rest of the song, you can tell that she's upset, but it's a little more resigned and accepting. But in that one guitar part, you can really hear the desperation. The lyrics at the end are also really powerful. I'm gonna steal my heart back and find a love that's true. That's really a good way to resolve the song. When it gets to that one part, it's not real. You just feel such a catharsis in that moment. The third song on this album is The End of You. It's a really intense feeling song. This song also has a lot of cool imagery, mythology and sailing. It does kind of sound like you're in a turbulent ocean. This part is fun to shout. It isn't the most interesting song on the album. The next song on the album is Burn Don't Freeze. It might just be my favorite Slater Kinney song. Wait, here comes the chorus, I need to stop. I've never been able to find out what this lyric is. I know I'm interrupting the song, but I have to. The devil spins this world around. Do you want to go underground? If you know, please tell me. Don't you want to The two vocal parts just weave together so perfectly. The hellfire kind of lightness, darkness imagery is very clear and consistent. The narrator was trying to conform to what the other person wanted them to be and became dependent on that person. The one problem with this song, you want to sing both parts, so which part do you choose? Every time you listen to it, you have to listen to it twice. One time for Carrie's part and one time for Corin's part. The next song on the album is God is a Number. This song is about society trying to mold you and people not really questioning their beliefs. This song uses kind of technology metaphors. I feel like the balance in this song is a little bit off because sometimes I can't really hear chord. That goes for a couple of the songs on this album. That's definitely the most fun part in the song. 
whole guitar part kind of feels like a question. And this guitar part feels like an answer. There's something effective about the guitar part. Da, 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 da. That's more robotic. Da, 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 da. That part at the very end sounds like the more organic guitar parts on this album. It's breaking out of just being a number and becoming an individual. It's not completely interesting, but I do like it a lot. So the next song on this album is Banned from the End of the World. You recognize that the end of something is coming, so you're reveling in it before it's totally gone, but it feels a little bit hysterical, a little bit frantic. That was clearly a reference to a Prince song. This album came out in 1999. The Prince song 1999 is about partying before the end of the world, connecting that theme with the theme of Banned from the End of the World. It's about reveling in the last moments of whatever is ending. It kind of bops. It kind of makes you want to party. The next song on this album is Don't Talk Like. So this guitar part, there's a little something jarring, a little bit of crunchiness, and that emphasizes the negativity. I feel like Korn's voice is also a little too quiet in this one. Fun drumming right there. The lyrics are interesting because this album is about the breakup with a woman who was 11 years older than Carrie, and the first few lyrics are, don't talk like, like you're 19, you're 35. The part I find really intriguing is, there's a part of me that works just like a child, there's a part of me that's you. Corin's emotion in those lyrics really makes me feel for her, even if I'm not entirely sure the meaning of this song. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. The next song on the album is Get Up. The opening guitar part is already so much happier than anything else you've heard on the album. It starts middle, kind of goes down, and then it picks back up again. And then right after you have that nice optimistic thing, of course it comes in with the more hardcore guitar. That harder guitar part gives it kind of a bite. The optimistic guitar part is kind of saying, we're all human. And the biting guitar part is kind of saying, yeah, I exist. I'm right here. I like the parts where Carrie goes, I am fine, I'm not fine, because at first, it's like she's putting on this facade. Then she admits, I'm not fine. It's okay to be not fine. The guitar part in the bridge sounds like running down a hill at full speed and you're not afraid of tripping. That guitar part falls down and then it resets. When she says, oh, get up. And then the guitar part comes in. Every time you hear it, you get excited because it's impossible not to. The next song on this album is One Song For You. feels like Carrie's taking the power back a little bit. Not entirely, there's still a little bit of upset. It makes you feel like you want to get out there and conquer something. And this is another one of the songs on the album that kind of resolves at the end, but I can't live for you. It's showing that she's growing from, you know, the kind of mindset where she was dependent on this person. And it has a perfect opening. You're on the edge of your seat. It's anticipatory. And then it hits with the drums and the guitar that really draws you in. You can't listen to it in the background. The next song on this album is The Size of Our Love. Other songs were kind of desperate. This song is resigned. The 
violin in the background. It's kind of like the violin playing on the Titanic when the ship is sinking. You can kind of feel the pull of the strings, a little bit uncomfortable. This song has hospital sickness imagery. It's very strong. thing sounds sort of sickly and broken. Even the guitar part is sort of melancholy. It doesn't sound very full or complete. It sounds a little bit like a wheeze. At the end she says, this hole in the ground where my heart's buried now. Her heart is out of her body and she's sort of broken from this relationship, but it could also show that she's moving on from it. She's buried the end of the relationship. The next song on this album is Living in Exile. <laughs> Now, I've talked earlier about how strong I find the imagery on this album. On this song, the comparison is to a princess, which I find a little worn out. <laughs> Carrie's background part in the chorus, and that's the part that kind of draws me in. Corn obviously has the main part, but then Carrie gives it volume, makes it full. This guitar part in the background right here sounds a little bit like an alarm. I don't know why it has that xylophone sound. I don't really think it's necessary. Not my favorite, but I still like it. The next song on this album is Memorize Your Lines. drums in this part are great. The sun has set, so I think I'm going to move the camera. Maybe this. We can talk it out. Sounds a little bit like the halting speech of an actor who doesn't know their lines. The different sections of this song are really interesting. So it starts kind of with the lines that she's memorized, she's just reciting them. It goes into the self-reflection of this is a performance of my life, and then it goes into internally telling yourself to memorize the lines to practice them so that you can still be with this person, changing yourself to be who they want you to be. I also really love the part where Corin is saying, won't you tell me what are we fighting for? The last song on the album is A Quarter to Three. I just kind of really like the guitar part in this song. I don't like the ooh, ah in the background. That just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. This part is kind of cool, I guess, but again, I don't really see the purpose. Also, I personally am against fading out in songs. I think it's the coward's way out. Corn's voice is also a little more held back and fragile, a little less confident in this song. I think ending the album with this song is kind of a weird choice. It's kind of like if Taylor Swift ended her most recent album, Reputation, with Call It What You Want instead of New Year's Day. Take that as you will, but I do like a quarter to three. So the hot rock, in conclusion. I love the sound of it. I love that it has so many varying songs. You can go from the ultimate highs of Burn Don't Freeze and Get Up, and then you can go to these really low lows, like The Size of Our Love, but they all are coherent. The guitar lines are always melodic and weaving. The drums are really crisp. So now let me whip out the Bible. I'm gonna just read a couple sentences about this album because I think Carrie knows it best. Then you write songs for what will become the hot rock. Songs about a love that is so airless, it's suffocating. Songs about wanting to steal your heart back from someone you feel never deserved it. Whereas Dig Me Out had a singular voice, the songs on the hot rock had two competing narratives. All that was coherent and blunt about Dig Me Out atomized on the hot rock. It's a labyrinthine record, sad, fractious, not a victory lap, but speaking to uncertainty. So that's really cool. It is labyrinthine. Labyrinthine? I don't know how to say that word. 
the guitar parts all feel sort of like they're wandering through this maze of feelings. This album is so great to me because it can make me feel those broken feelings, but it also makes you feel like you want to get back up again and keep living your life as a human being. I would just like to say hi to the people that support my Slater Kinney content, so Sarah and Cecilia, and the Slater Kinney support group on Twitter. You guys are very cool. So, see you next time!